Hi guys, please like, share and subscribe and contact this number if you want lectures related to any CM, CS or CB subjects. Thank you. So now I want to address a very small topic. This is called a state dependent utility functions. So let's talk about what the idea is here. See, the thing is that the utility function that's, that we have been uh, talking about so far, we used to take just one utility function. For example, we took uh, log of the wealth or we took exponential of the wealth or whatever power utility function. And we used to say that no matter what the level of W is, okay, for all W's, uh, either this is the utility function or this is the utility uh, function or this is the utility function, whatever. It was one function which used to determine the investor's utility throughout the range, but this might be inadequate. The shape of the utility function can vary with the level of wealth, okay? So you can have like, uh, you know, different levels of wealth and you can have different shapes of the utility function maybe in this range it's like this and then uh, suddenly there is a discontinuous jump because of some reason okay so let me just show you that so let's say maybe at this level it uh, discontinuously changes its form it goes like this and then it ha is like this so it cannot be like modeled just based on one uh, function one consistent continuous function right it can change discontinuously it can even change like this in this range okay anything can happen right it obviously it cannot get, go to a lower level of utility so maybe it can be like this and then like this okay so it, it can have like uh, different uh, you know functions to describe it in different uh, ranges of wealth that's that's the simple idea that i'm trying to talk about so that's wh uh, what are called as state dependent utility functions okay uh, the investor is in a certain state here okay so let's say the investor can be in various states so the states of investors are uh, investor are maybe let's say married or single okay so we know uh, that uh, married people generally tend to be more risk averse uh, than single people right because single people don't have dependents and married people do have dependents a lot of time. So the utility function of a person can discontinuously change, uh, you know, from singlehood to marriage, right? Maybe let's say uh, like uh, we have the uh, utility, uh, wait, uh, we have the utility function of a single person, uh, which looks uh, somewhat like uh, this it increases with the increasing level of wealth so the risk seeking sort of investor and for someone who is married it's like this so it increases at a decreasing uh, rate right uh, which just indicates that they're risk covers okay so you can have like uh, different forms of utility functions where you are in different states okay it can change with levels of wealth that you have poor uh, like as soon as you cross a certain uh, wealth threshold uh, you can go to a high, uh, different uh, form of the utility function or uh, your uh, state can change in terms of you can go from being single to married and then your utility function can change, right? So a lot of li things like these can happen, okay? So that is what we are talking about. So let me just give you a couple of examples here. Let's just consider there is an insurance company, okay? And um, at a certain level of wealth, it will become insolvent, okay? That is, uh, it will be considered as insolvent if it its wealth goes below that, okay? So what will happen? Uh, let's just say this is your wealth scale and this is your utility of wealth, okay? So what will happen is, and let's say this is the uh, solvency level. So above the solvency level, the company is very much risk averse. So you see that the utility is increasing at a decreasing rate. Why? because uh, it doesn't want to risk being insolvent because if you are insolvent it me means a lot of reputational damage okay you don't want that reputational damage and uh, that's why at this level uh, like uh, above this level you are highly risk averse okay so your uh, utility increases at a decreasing rate below this level uh, you are already insolvent so you are insolvent here and you are solvent here okay so below this level uh, 
the company is highly risk seeking because it's anyhow wants to become solvent so it will take a lot of risks so uh, the utility increases at an increasing rate and that's why you have uh, such a such a utility function right uh, which uh, increases at an increasing rate just a second yeah uh, you have such a utility function that increases at an increasing rate what happens at the uh, level of solvency itself it's vertical even a small amount of uh, you know wealth which pushes you to the right of the solvency level okay uh, you're willing to take that risk let's just say you have just become insolvent okay so you're in this small delta region uh, i'm calling it delta because it's a small region so delta l minus delta to delta around this level let's say this is the zero wealth level and this is minus delta to delta so uh, just to the left of this okay or just to the right of this okay at this level um, any small amount of wealth to the left of this can give you a lot of utility because suddenly you will become solvent okay that's why you have this vertical line here because uh, you you are willing to put in very uh, you know a lot of effort to become solvent and that will give you infinite amount of utility the reason is that you will become solvent so when you care so much about the level of solvency that determines your utility okay uh, and to the left of it you are risk seeking to the right of it you are risk averse and at that level you are infinitely risk seeking because you just want to become solvent somehow okay so that's the idea uh, there can be other examples of state dependent utility you can have a, a healthy person and a, he a sick person uh, maybe a healthy person might be more uh, risk seeking as compared to someone who's sick because they just want to like you know they know that they cannot probably work anymore because they are sick and they they uh, really like want to save the wealth that they have uh, similarly single people tend to be more risk seeking as compared to married people so the whole idea is with the level of wealth or with an external factor such as you being uh, single or uh, married or being healthy or sick your utility function can change it's not like that one utility function will be able to describe your entire uh, uh, describe your entire attitude no matter what your state is no matter what your wealth is so that's that's the idea here okay okay so now i'm discussing how to get an individual's utility function so let's say you have a person in front of you and you want to find what the nature of the utility function is with the exact parameters now i had discussed this at the beginning of this chapter that this gets very tricky this is a limitation of uh, utility theory in the sense that you can't uh, you know just go and uh, observe an individual and find the exact nature of their uh, uh, utility function but there are se several techniques of which you can employ so let's just talk about them in theory you can just go uh, and directly ask a person about the mathematical form of their utility function but they are unlikely to know it no one would come to you and say that my uh, utility function is a uh, log utility function and that's how i evaluate the utilities of my wealth and that's how i decide on gambles and insurance uh, but then you can always resort to indirect questioning what does that mean let's just take an example okay and this is from the material itself so let's just say uh, there is a person whose uh, utility function you want to evaluate in a range of wealth that is between 0 and 4 okay so you want to find what is then uh, the nature of their utility function in this range from 0 to 4 uh, where 0 and 4 are basically the extremes so what you'll do is first of all step 1 is to assign utility values arbitrarily to the extreme values which is like 0 and 4 here okay so in this case let's just say we decide that utility at 0 is equal to 0 you can assign any values i'm just taking a very simplified sort of case and you want to uh, keep the utility between 0 and 1 okay um, so let's just say the utility at the wealth level 4 is equal to 1 okay now uh, what we can do now is that we can design a gamble design a gamble which gives
zero with probability is equal to uh, fifty percent and four with probability is equal to fifty percent. Okay, and uh, offer this to the investor or the individual. Okay, so you offer this gamble. uh this gamble that you will receive zero with a probability of 50% and four with a probability of 50% to the individual and you ask them what is the amount that they are willing to pay in order to avoid this gamble or uh what is the certainty equivalent of this gamble for them that is uh what will be that level of wealth ask for the level of wealth they will be indifferent with indifferent with this gamble so what will be that level of wealth uh which they'll compare this gamble to or they'll be indifferent between this gamble and that level of wealth okay let's just say hypothetically that level of wealth we are calling it as w prime let's just say the investor says that the level of wealth is w prime is equal to 1.8 that is they are saying that either you give me this 1.8 or you give me this gamble of making zero with 50% probability and four with 50% probability i'll be indifferent between the two so if the investor will be indifferent between the two i can say that the expected utility from this gamble should be equal to uh the expected uh, uh or, or the utility of having wealth 1.8 okay so i can say utility of w prime which is equal to utility of 1.8 uh i can actually assign a utility value to it now will be equal to half into utility at 0 plus half into utility at 4 right because this was the gamble and this is the expected utility out of that and this is the utility at 0.8 so utility at oh uh, sorry 1.8 utility at 1.8 can be written as what is the utility of 0 we have assigned 0 and at uh, uh 4 we have assigned uh 1 so this just becomes 0.5 into 0 plus uh, 0.5 into 1 so that will just be 0.5 so we found a new point that is uh, 1.8 and we are able to uh, define the utility at this point uh, the utility at 1.8 is 0.5 now you can even go further you can offer a gamble which pays uh 1.8 with 50% probability and 4 with 50% probability and then you can ask the investor what is the level of wealth they are indifferent to between this gamble and that level of wealth okay what is the level of wealth let's call it w double prime what is that level of wealth w double prime such that they are indifferent between this gamble and w double prime let's just say the investor says that the level of wealth is actually equal to 2.88 okay they'll they'll tell you this okay which just means that the utility uh, expected utility from this gamble and this level of wealth is equal so you can actually say u of 2.8 uh, is actually equal to uh, half into utility of uh, uh 1.8 plus uh, half into utility of 4 okay because this was the gamble that i was dealing with okay so utility at 2.88 can be found out like this this will be half into what is the utility at 1.8 it's 0.5 and uh, half of 1 so it will just become uh, 0.75 so you can say this is the utility at uh, uh, 2.88 uh, uh, 
this way you can keep on offering the investor uh, gambles and you can try and figure out what is the uh, utility at different levels of wealth and once you have utility at multiple levels of wealth uh, you can actually draw a curve and try to fit a curve uh, to the investors utility um, you know uh, so basically you have sort of uh, uh, the point so at zero it's zero at four it's gonna be one and then at uh, uh, like some so you have about two here in the middle of the two so to the left of that you have 1.8 where the utility is exactly 50 percent so it's 0 0.5 and then you have 2.88 somewhere here and the utility is exactly in the middle of these two 0 0.75 so you have uh, this point and then you have uh, this point and then you have this point so your utility curve is somewhat going like this okay and then you can actually uh, define a certain function okay you can define a certain function uh, and try to fit that function you can use the method of least, least squares you can use the maximum likelihood estimation any method um, and try to fit this curve and that will give you the investors utility function okay so that's that's the whole idea of uh, how it works 